Hey, Emily. Good morning. Hey, how are you, Alalita? <laughs> how are you? How are you? Good. Sorry, I was just <laughs> chatting with somebody. Uh, no worries. <laughs> Hi, Dawn. Good morning. Hello. Hey, Dawn. Quiet group. Okay, maybe not that quiet. No, no, definitely quiet. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Amy. Good morning. <laughs> Greetings. We'll give it a few more minutes for folks to be able to come on in. Sure. Hello, everyone. Hey. Hello. We've got tag updates. Um, my only question, and I'm kind of looking at like the rest of the group, uh, tag app delivery. Do we have anybody here from app delivery? I was going to skip them. Okay, I mean, it's also like, the, if you're not here, please raise your hand, I understand. Um, however, that was my one note as far as procedural stuff this morning. All right, we'll give a few more minutes for Dim's folks to be able to come on in. Greetings. I had a mental note of like when we hit like 25, I was going to kick us off anyways, and Dim's happened to be 25, so there we are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome. You have made it to your October 4th TOC meeting. Rock and roll. Normal antitrust policy notice. Good to see all of you. You've made it here or you're watching the recording, one of the two. TOC members are going to be tracked over in the working doc. And here's our agenda. Um, I know that there's been some conversations like, you know, about other things to be able to discuss. We will drop those into questions um, and happy to be able to like take questions in chat as we move along in here. So tag updates, I'm gonna pass us to tag storage. And I know you've got a lot in here, so so take it away. <laughs> Yay. Hey, uh, okay, yeah. So uh, from tag storage, um, we had, uh, uh, Vitas, ETCD, Langhorn, Rook presented at our tax storage meetings. Uh, Cloud Native PG also presented. One thing we discussed in our last meeting is that we want to come up with a use case template based on our CNCF storage landscape white paper. 
So in that paper, we discussed uh, uh, what are the storage attributes and how different storage layers affect those attributes. So having some real use cases and connecting concrete storage projects with uh, what we described in that white paper will be useful. Uh, so, uh, so we're thinking we want to ask projects to submit a PR to fill in a template once that's ready, uh, but also we'll uh, ask them to give a presentation to the tag. And, and those will be, the use cases will be in our tag storage repo. And the uh, projects, uh, it's not just uh, CNCF projects. It uh, can, does not have to be limited to that. Uh, any cloud native storage projects can can be included, um, and also because this information will be provided by the project maintainers, uh, so we're going to add a disclaimer saying, you know, this is a community maintained use cases, uh, so it's not like we are uh, recommending this project for anything but it's this is community maintained so we'll add a disclaimer that like that i'd like to see if uh, if there's any concerns from poc regarding this i dropped one note in chat because i wanted to make sure um we're, we're limiting it to open source projects but not cncf right just wanted to make sure it was like the, uh, I think that sounds fine. Dan was passing to you. Okay. So if we want to go beyond C the open source, then that's, a, yeah, then we will, we'll have another discussion if that Correct. Kind of comes yeah. up. I agree that is a good, uh, you know, uh, boundary to do. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, and other than that, yeah, I don't have a lot here. So open EBS, uh, so I think this uh, incubation request is still ongoing. Uh, there were some concerns regarding lack of maintainers. There was an issue open for that. I believe the team has been trying to address those issues. And uh, uh, Curve, uh, we, uh, so they presented a tech storage. Also, uh, TOC voted for that. It passed the majority. Uh, I believe it's still not included yet because they still need to get this uh, license issue resolved. Um, and then Karina, uh, they presented a tech storage uh, we recommend for Sandbox. Uh, oh, one sec, uh, Shane. Yeah, sure. Uh, Amy, uh, who's, whose lap is it on right now, the license exception? Uh, license exception is over with governing board. They're actually included as part of the sandbox, so so do not hold up on that one. Um, like the, it's something that we're working at as part of onboarding. So I appreciate it coming up in here. We we will work on this. So we're in governing board. Okay. Okay. So we don't have any action. Nothing items. for you all. Nothing oh, for you okay. all. It's fine. It's like yeah. thank you for reminding me, but like it's, it's fine. <laughs> okay. Okay. I just noticed that they are not. It says it's passed, but it's not. They're not included. Okay. All right. Got it. Thanks. Um, so Karina basically, it's so since we recommend it, so basically they will be included in maybe future runs of the voting then for Sandbox? Uh, yeah, so next time we uh, take up, uh, we do it like every, mo every month or so. Um, mm -hmm. Next time we'll make sure that we talk about Karina first before we talk, go to the other ones. Okay, thank you. Let me check to make sure they've actually reapplied because if they don't reapply, if we're not going to be able to remember, um, right. I don't, I don't see them yet on the list. So, uh, Karina, if you're out there, please reapply. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, just tell them to reapply, please. Uh, yes, so okay. That would be yeah, well, yeah, I, I will pin because the last time I think uh, uh, we basically just t tell them that we will look at their presentations and get back to them. So we also have not uh, told them that we recommended the sandbox. So. I will send them a note, ask them to reapply. Uh, okay, yeah, so other than that, I think uh, there's uh, like, we already talked about this white paper, so there's uh, no new update since our previous update. I think I'm all set. I'm all set. Uh, so I, I did have a general question, Shane. Yes. Um, how, how was the, how are, how was the tag, helping with, with or working on the CSI specifications themselves? 
um, say if somebody wants to uh, propose a change, like is it still the same process? You uh, work on the specification part first, uh, make a change, and then uh, how do you roll it out? Uh, you know, CSI. Yeah, I, um, yeah, yeah. CSI. Yeah. CSI, but that's not under the tag, right? But most of the people in the stack end up doing a CSI implementation, right? So uh, is there any? Most, I think that's mo mostly in the SIG storage, I think. In in tag storage, we are not really uh, focusing on CSI itself. OK. Right. Oh, good. So, if, if so you're saying like if, there is, if someone wants to propose a new change to CSI, right. how does that go through? Oh. Yeah, so basically, uh, normally people will go to this, there is a community sync that uh, happens uh, uh, once a month. And so people normally go there and, uh, you know, present, and then they can submit a PR. Well, actually, you know, now I, I actually have a PR there. So okay. submit PR to say, I want to bring in those new changes. And normally they would ask you to, um, to also uh, explain what is the overall workflow. And not just the CSI part, but also like from the, uh, normally Kubernetes side, right? Right. Uh, it's better to have a cap to say, how are you going to use this uh, new changes you are adding to CSS spec? And then going through the reviews. Uh, yeah, and then, uh, you know, once it's uh, passed, then that can get merged. So right now we actually have quite a few new things, big, pretty big items actually right now. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, we are trying to, yeah, we're trying, yeah, and there's a, uh, I have a proposal for, uh, volume group and volume group snapshot. So that's a proposal in CSS back. There's also cap in Kubernetes upstream. Okay. There's also another proposal about uh, uh, change block tracking that also has a proposal on adding some new new things in CSS back. There's also a cap in Kubernetes upstream. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you much. Moving on to security. Who do we have for security today? Hello, it is me today. Oh, excellent. All right. Passing to you. And either I'm frozen or you're all frozen or something happened. Andy has unfortunately been experiencing network issues today. <laughs> all right. Okay. Then anyway, I, I, will, I will let you be thank back. You very, um, firstly, Brandon. thanks to everybody involved here and day minus one. Um, oh, is, is Andy back? No. Uh, how does this sound? Much better, thank you, Andy. Okay, sans video, maybe. Um, I do apologize, if I disappear again, I, I will proceed. Um, thank you, a huge oceanic wells of thanks to everybody who has helped set up Cloud Native Security Con. This is the spin out event from the day zero and day minus one uh, events at KubeCon. So um, we will have uh, a multi-track two day event in Seattle in February. And then there's a proposal to intertwine the same kind of um, talk uh, and to track titles into a security village in the main KubeCon event to replace those day zero and day minus one events. It's hugely exciting and, and very pleased to be involved. Then the work we have been undertaking, there is a supply chain security survey that has gone out. This is looking to understand where we best focus our efforts for any future recommendations that the group makes by understanding what projects or which projects are in use by CNCF projects. So what type of build systems, what type of tooling, um, how people are looking to secure their supply chain, and indeed, what does the supply chain mean to various people? Um, do people consider themselves producers or consumers primarily? It's kind of understanding. We have had another um, presentation from uh, and self-assessment from Cube Edge, which is uh, which is underway, and the cloud native security controls. We're looking to map recommendations to ecosystem tooling in order to provide recommendations and also to make clear what options are available for people to choose for their uh, various levels of risk tolerance. Onwards, the cloud native security white paper 
is undergoing its third iteration. Um, the uh, I apologise because I actually had to, I've lost to the um, the slides, but there are some notes as to what that actually is in there, Brandon. If you don't mind uh, picking that up for me in a second when I've finished, uh, the lightweight threat modelling process. We're looking to expedite the um, sort of growing number of projects that are looking for that security self-assessment and threat modeling. Uh, a working group has put together a rapid risk assessment based document, essentially a questionnaire, that is modeled after the trail of bits audit on Kubernetes itself. So we've expanded and modified the document somewhat. The goal here is to be able to work through the threat model for an individual project within one to two working group sessions. So scoping the thing narrowly, time boxing it, and lowering the barrier to adoption of the barrier to entry for new security threat modeling contributors. Um, the personal passion, I'm very, very pleased that we're moving forward with that. We are about to kick off a zero trust um, working group that is essentially looking at how we make recommendations that respond to some of the papers, uh, some of the work coming out of NIST. Um, and, and some of those standards that, that are turning up around zero trust in general from US governments. And finally, the security reviews, um, CQ failure, flux, uh, multi-tenancy, they performed a self-assessment and uh, that will go into threat modeling, Argo and Cube Edge. The proposition is to use that lightweight threat modeling process on the flux multi-tenancy audit as the first uh, guinea pig, if you like, for the thing. Um, that's all from me. Anything else from you, Brandon? Yeah, I, I guess I can. Um, the, the, the V3 white paper you were talking about just now, uh, I think one of the two main focuses are adding in um, content on confidential computing, um, as well as taking some of the the, the content that, that we've written out as part of the serverless uh, working group and just integrating that into V3 uh, instead of having a separate white paper. Um, other than that, I think just, just a quick note on the Zero Trust um, working group that, that we are spinning up. Uh, I think one of the, the, one of the issues that we're trying to, to solve amongst the, the whole list of uh, uh, misconceptions of Zero Trust is like, you know, um, a lot of times people are still thinking about parameter security. And I think that is kind of a lot of the term parameter security encoded in a lot of security and compliance documents. And that proves to be very difficult for zero trust adoption. There seems to be a conversation. So I was like, okay, what are you doing for parameter security? But that um, the idea of parameter security just like conflicts with, with the zero trust model. So that's one of the goals of that, that working group there. Okay. Uh, any questions from any QC members? Or other yeah. people. I guess other yeah, people can ask questions else. too. <laughs> I think I had a I had a question on the ongoing security reviews. Um, is there a process that's published that um, you know different projects can leverage for uh, being ready for these security reviews? Um, you know, just to just to make sure that uh, while you're going through again incubation as well as graduation, some of these uh, requirements are upheld by the projects. You know, via continuous security integration or otherwise? So we, we have a process that um, projects can can come and like request assessment and like we, we I'm going to put a link. Oh, thank you, Raga. <laughs> um, on like, okay, he, we, we need um, the self-assessment document to be created by the, on the project and then we have someone review it and there's a whole process around that. We have a queue of um, projects that are doing that. Um, the, the thing that we don't have like an official mapping of like, okay, if you're a sandbox process, uh, project, you need to do a self-assessment or, or so on. Um, the general ideology we have usually is, um, for most projects that are 
going for incubation, at least having a self-assessment, which is part one of the review, um, is something good to have. Um, that is, of course, according to kind of the um, the analysis of the, the, the TLC sponsor that they think, okay, this is a critical security um, infrastructure project and therefore should require a security review. Um, I think that's, so in the general rule that we kind of try and follow is incubation, self-assessments, uh, graduation, uh, we, we, we want to target a full review and you know we're, we're doing that for Argo right now, it's just completing that. So okay. I'll, I'll add on there. Um, yeah, any project within the CNCF sandbox or incubation is more than welcome to complete a self-assessment. The self-assessment um, is set up and designed to assist projects in understanding more about the security and the architectural design of the project itself, and to kind of give them more of a security mindset and a lens around any future development and ongoing work within the project. It also is incredibly useful as an initial set of security documentation for any potential adopters to go through and read and understand kind of what the security considerations the project has already undertaken, any kind of security features and functionality within those projects. So it's something that I would personally strongly recommend all projects take a look at and see if it's something that they want to keep within their repo or file as a PR against the tag security repository. That way they're centrally located and anybody can go and access them and they can link it back in their original docs. Uh, Emily and Redmond, thank you. I mean, that's very helpful because, uh, you know, a lot of, the, for example, I work on open telemetry and, and, you know, given it's a very large project, there have been many, many requests over time uh, for, you know, from users who are using or developers who are using, you know, uh, contributing to open telemetry to have um, you know, security reviews and depend known risks and, and dependency on dependencies, especially, right? And, and that's something that um, typically is not instrumented on the projects, but, you know, could be actually um, built out with a continuous security pipeline, for example. So again, some of the practical aspects uh, might be useful, but I'll take a look at the assessment. So thank you for the link. The main thing that I was like, there's so many things happening. Do you have enough people to do all the things? That that was my question uh, to you all. Um, more people would definitely be helpful. <laughs> uh, I think we, especially in the area of security reviews, um, that's an area that we've had um, a little bit of a retention problem because it is a pretty involved effort. Um, I think we're, we're trying to find ways to do this. Um, we've talked about uh, with, with Emily um, about you know having badging and things like that. I think that would be helpful. Uh, but I think out of most of the projects, I would say the reviews are the one that, that does require a good amount of effort um, and has a little bit more of a um, sustainability issue in the long term. Thanks, Brenda. All right, hearing nothing else, we'll move along. Run time. Come on in. Hi, everyone. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Hope everyone is doing great. Okay, so tag run time. We. We've had some presentations from different projects uh, in the containers and runtime space. We have one coming up in our next meeting. Uh, it's called Lima. It's um, Linux virtual machines, and it's basically kind of like a container D for Mac. So it's a way to to run container D on a Mac, which is kind of something requested by developers. So excited about that. Uh, they're also applying for Sandbox, I believe. I don't know if they got accepted yet. They're but... in. They're oh, in. So cool. now they're a Sandbox project, and you're having fun with the Sandbox project. Game on. Awesome. 
And in terms of uh, workloads, uh, we have discussions with this project called WASMI, and it's basically a WebAssembly interpreter. So we have a discussion going on with them, and hopefully we're gonna have present a presentation from them pretty soon. So, and hopefully we have more involvement from them. Uh, there's a, another project called CVL Mariner. This is a common-based Linux uh, distribution. Uh, it's from the folks at Microsoft. Um, it's a distribution used for edge type of workloads. Uh, it's similar to some other projects that are actually offer container only Linux uh, distributions, kind of like flat card. We're also excited about this. So we reached out and hopefully we have a presentation from them pretty soon. There's also a discussion on standardization of the out of memory communicate kill communication between the kubelet and the runtime. This is going on between uh, attack runtime mailing list and Slack channel and uh, Kubernetes sick node. Uh, so hopefully we'll see more progress there. Um, so attack runtime is just going to be there just to help out in any way. Uh, but we're actually monitoring that uh, development and we'll be here just to help out and maybe possibly you know if there's something that kind of fills in within a working group uh, we'll also help out also we have um in a different scope of project open policy registry this is um a project related to security um, but also the interesting part is with uh, tag runtime or relationship with tag runtime is that it is using OCI, the open container uh, interface to store OPA policies. And we have a presentation from them on, in our meeting on, on October 20th. And finally, on um, some activities with, uh, within the tag, uh, uh, our bash system initiative working group finally got approved. So excited about that. So folks on the working group are starting to make some progress and do some work. We also have a KubeCon North America in-person session on Unikernel and Unicraft. It's actually going to be given by Alexander Jung. I think he's on the call now, so excited about that too. And we continue to have conversations and interest in the community about having a working group related to Unikernels as well as a working group uh, related to WebAssembly. That's all the updates. Happy to take any questions if you have any. Thank you, Ricardo. Thank you. All right, seeing no questions. In chat or otherwise, we'll move on. Thank you much, take run time. Take observability. Hey, uh, hi everyone. Sweet, come on uh, in. <laughs> good to meet everyone today. Um, just wanted to give a quick update on all the happenings at the uh, observability tag. Lots of activity. We first of all uh, finally have a new logo. So we all uh, as a community decided finally and picked the uh, the owl and and uh, it's a cute one. <laughs> so good to good to finally. Um, you know, be consistent. Um, lots of activity around, uh, you know, throughout the quarter on uh, different um, projects as well as different initiatives. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, discussion that's been happening in the community as well as work around uh, interoperability of existing standards in observability, especially uh, with the open telemetry and Prometheus uh, interop um, discussions that are ongoing in the Prometheus uh, work group, interop work group in OTEL, uh, open telemetry. And, and especially uh, there's a lot of work happening around the advanced histograms uh, support, both on the Prometheus project as well as OTEL. Uh, it's a fair bit of work and discussion around there. Uh, also, um, Hotel Collector, which is the main collector agent that Open Telemetry uh, produces, um, fair bit of discussion around garbage collection, configuration management, optimizations, you know, needed, because as uh, tracing and metrics uh, support gets completed, tracing is already stable, uh, 
uh, there are a lot more users who are starting to use collect the open telemetry collector for collection of telemetry data and um, performance and uh, as well as uh, seamless configuration management becomes a large issue there, right? So again, good discussions around that, uh, pros and cons, et cetera. Uh, another area that's been um, pretty popular around uh, the discussions and pretty much, you know, you've covered a lot of the reviews is the open telemetry enhancement uh, proposal for adding profiling support uh, in open telemetry. And that's pretty exciting. It was a uh, discussion that originally started in the, CN in the tag and then uh, have kind of evolved into a proposal which has then been submitted to the open telemetry specification uh, for addition. So there's ongoing work happening on OTEL, uh, which then supports you know, interop on profiling as well as full support of the spec. A um, couple of other areas I'd like to call out again, and then, you know, we had a full set of meetings this quarter, so super excited about that, is uh, starting to think about how we can uh, promote more uh, collaboration with Kubernetes instrumentation, SIGs, and others, so that uh, there is a continued focus on uh, integrating and providing more telemetry from the Kubernetes layers. Um, and being able to instrument with different APIs that are stable, OTEL especially, or as well as other uh, projects within the observability space uh, for Kubernetes instrumentation. Then we had actually three other initiatives, and I'd like to call this out. One is the la ongoing landscape graph work that we have been uh, working on, and some of our contributors uh, who have run, really done a fantastic job on uh, kind of building out, leveraging some of the graph uh, mesh um, modules, but, you know, really building out the relationships between uh, activity projects within uh, the observability projects, but also, you know, working with the contributor SIG and the security SIG to map out further dependencies. And this is a project that is ongoing uh, and, and uh, will continue, we'll continue to keep giving an update. Um, the other area that I'd like to call out is that there's a fair bit of work that's happening around the Cortex Project Health um, uh, discussion. We've had discussions with DIMS as, you know, uh, leading that from the TOC, as well as working closely with the Cortex Project maintainers to be able to then provide uh, feedback and report back to the uh, governance committee, as well as the TOC. Uh, and this is something, again, that we've made good progress on. And I'd like to, you know, again, if you want to follow details, the issue is right there. Um, and and uh, please feel free to kind of uh, dive into that. Uh, I'll keep you uh, folks updated as we make, you know, um, reports and write, uh, you know, the findings down. But we have a good update coming in from the Cortex project at this point, And there are more maintainers who are getting involved in being able to contribute to the project. So that's uh, that's exciting, um, but there's still work to be done there, obviously. Um, a couple of other areas, of course, we continue to have good presentations in the tags uh, and discussions around new uh, open source projects. Odigos was one of the projects that was you know, discussed and there was a technical walkthrough on it. We've also started a a uh, series of observability expert speakers uh, coming and speaking at the tag, and that's uh, you know pulled in a lot of interest. Uh, Liz Fong Jones, who was uh, presenting on evolving and hybridizing signal types, uh, spoke in August. We also have a couple more talks coming up uh, by Yuri, um, one of the key maintainers in Jaeger, presenting in October, and then Jonah. Uh, Koval, who is an ex expert on logs, presenting in November. So again, we hope that this will actually help in, in also pulling in and answering many of the end user questions because we do tend to get you know, a good mix of uh, vendors as well as end users in the tag uh, for observability. So um, overall, lots of activity, but we will be actually uh, doing a update and a an, uh, meeting at, the, at KubeCon in uh, coming up in three weeks. And we also hope to have a good 
uh, agenda and plan for some of the projects and initiatives that we uh, intend to carry out next year. So uh, exciting times. Uh, again, we continue to see more uh, in engagement, but uh, would love to see more, even more <laughs> going from there. And that's about it. That's, I think, all I had to highlight. Um, and uh, any questions? Um, so I do have a question. So uh, I was very happy to um, update all our hotel libraries um, it, it, from HCD uh, updated it first and then Kubernetes updated. It took a little bit of time to get it right because there are so many libraries and the version numbers are like all over the place. Uh, so, but we were able to pull that off. So um, thanks for that. Uh, I think it's getting better. Uh, so we had to you know, go back and forth between older libraries and newer libraries, and there were some issues there. But overall, uh, good. Uh, we were able to do that. Um, so the other question I had was there was some chatter on the tag observability around open metrics. Uh, did that get uh, resolved? Uh, yes, uh, actually. Uh, so one of the things that I would like to call out, and open metrics is very integral in the uh discussion around interop providing interoperability as a, uh, you know in the protocol between prometheus and o otlp right which is the open telemetry protocol so open metrics has been very integral to that whole process and in fact otel you know has supported open metrics first in terms of the uh, existing standard and prometheus as a project has also been working towards you know addressing some of the um implementation differences that they have with open metrics so that is something we'll continue to work on but you know open metrics obviously goes without saying is an integral part of supporting a metrics protocol uh on otel and uh there is some discussion around that as i said you know there uh and maybe richard you can also provide some details from the prometheus uh project um, but there's work uh, which is ongoing and open metrics, of course, is core there. From the Prometheus side, the main thing is um, high resolution histograms or native histograms, depending on which name you want to call them with. Um, and that's basically the interface uh, towards um, towards open telemetry to keep uh, both the Prometheus high resolution histograms and the open telemetry ones in sync. And that's also going to be the next major release of open metrics of course um it's going to be breaking along a few axes yeah like backwards yeah. compatibility blah 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 but yeah. it's going to be breaking and that's that's the mechanism of how to how to keep both prometheus and and open telemetry in sync yeah so there is that is still an ongoing open area uh but both both the projects as well as open metrics uh, everybody is working together towards ensuring that Sounds good, thank you. Any other questions? Adams, to your point about the installation and the uh, the versioning uh, differences, if you will, um, we'll take a look at that on the hotel side because I, I think, you know, uh, again, our objective is to continue to reduce complexity and, you know, uh, ensure that there is clear dependency association with versioning consistent uh, version. I'll send you some notes offline. Okay, Thanks. awesome. Thank you. Any other uh, questions? I think just a question related to this is like open telemetry is compa compatible with open metrics or are they have yes. they have different formats or, or no, or it is fully compatible. There is an interoperability interoper workgroup on Hotel, which has been working closely with uh, Richard and other open metrics, uh, you know, contributors, as well as with Prometheus. So at this point, the there is a set of compliance tests that you know are available from open metrics, and that's something that we actually run through and make sure is com is compatible. So open metrics is just a choice of metrics, but you can use other metrics with open. It's, it's the it's the protocol, the data definition, right? So and then you can actually use Prometheus interoperably with uh, open telemetry because yeah. they both use open metrics as the baseline. Got it. Got it. Okay. Thanks. Sure. Um, is there a, a guideline on you know when when to use 
uh, promises when to use open telemetry or there are different uh, uses scenario? I think there are many overlapping similar scenarios and um, that's an area that perhaps we can actually pick up and make more documentation available on. But there are use cases which are overlapping and uh, there are also use cases which are you know, very uh, much in use in the Prometheus community, but uh, are starting to get used on OTEL also. So Kathy, again, thanks for kind of raising that, but I think that that's an area which would help end users in general kind of be able to have more understanding of where Prometheus is optimized and uh, OTEL uh, may be easier to use. Yeah, that would be great, you know, if we can have a document identify the overlapping functionality yeah. and also yep. the difference, different yep. functionality, yep. right? Yep. Um, in which case to use which, that's what yes. help the end user to totally. choose. Totally, totally. Thank you for the suggestion. All right, in the interest of time, I am going to move us on in here. So okay, thank thanks, Amy. Nope, nope, thanks. nope, all good, all good. Tag Network, come on in. Hello. Hey, updates from Tag Network. Uh, we have not had a full set of meetings since last we spoke. We have had, uh, we do have a few updates though. Um, one is that um, Istio as a project has been accepted into incubation. Yay. And, <laughs> and then uh, uh, we have have an upcoming presentation. So speaking of Istio, there's a, a upcoming presentation from a project called Slime. It's um, uh, it's a project that en enhances um, Istio-based service meshes or enhances Istio deployments with additional management um, intelligence. We've got a, a few compelling examples of, uh, of how to do that. So service mesh management. Uh, and then in the working, and so they're, they're, I think they're, they're filed for, Slime is uh, proposed for sandbox and is asking for a time to present and so that should be very shortly speaking of presentations uh this thursday is our tag network meeting by the way just a public service announcements for the hundreds of people that attend tag network meeting uh we switched it from we've had a bump in cadence from the second and fourth thursdays of the month to the first and the third. Um, I, I believe uh, Kubernetes SIG network had recently uh, reshoveled re some of their meetings that turned out we were overlapping. And so given the two highly related topics, we decided to move around. And so, uh, so first and third Thursdays for TAG network. So this week is the first Thursday of October and we'll have a project update from net, the, the project network service mesh, um, NSM. The project update is uh, the details that you can see here, but a bit of maybe even live demonstration of how network service mesh is a mesh for, uh, can be used as a mesh for other meshes. So network service mesh going up to layer three and then having other service meshes operate on top of that. So. If you're into that kind of thing, we'll see you on Thursday. Um, otherwise, that's uh, that's that's what we've got for today. Um, questions from folks? A uh, quick question. So, um, the trend of uh, using not using sidecars uh, and relying on eBPF based uh, things. Um, you know, uh, there was something from Istio. I think there was something from Linkerd two days ago. So, you know, what's happening there? Any idea? <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, I would have. I'm hopeful for a bit of an uptick in the the service mesh performance project uh, as it relates to you know one of the compelling um, uh, characteristics of EB, of the use of eBPF is it is about performance, um, and that this is gonna, maybe this is too hand wavy, but but uh, is that you know like like any system design, there's some trade offs that happen between uh, you maybe you're getting higher performance. Um, a bit of uh, the, the, there's actually there's a great book on this subject written by, <laughs> but no, it's it's free and it's really it's really short. Um, 
but it articulates the notion that you'll, yeah, yeah, like, hey, if, if you got a proxy right, you know, sidecar right next to your app, um, you are, your um, risk boundary or your, uh, your ability to, to secure that, those transactions is really granular. And so if your proxy or the thing that's controlling those transactions is uh, daemon set based or is, you know, node based, it's a little bit of a, a different model that some of the models that are coming out are maybe helping overcome that, help, helping bring that um, closer um, toward the sidecar. I, I guess what I'm trying to point out is like, it's not a, it's, it's a sure you um, users like in Istio's case need to make it, they, they do have to make a comparative choice. Um, oh, what was I trying to say is that, uh, yeah, you won't, one doesn't, they aren't, huh. and so in, in that, geez, boy, I haven't really formulated my thoughts very well, clearly and concisely, is it like, oh. it's, it's still not like an apples to apples, like, like, yeah, they're going to have to make a choice. So they're going to compare between the two modes and then figure out if one has all the functions that they want and they want to trade it off for whether it was performance or a different use case. Um, and so, yeah, it's kind of disappointing to, to me personally that like they're going to they're positioned as such because because I'd rather they were positioned just as me Lee, personally speaking that I'd rather they were positioned in a more complementary you know right. you get the best of both. Also, go read the book. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks, Lee. Yeah. So, is there a project on that that Proxilis, the EPPF thing? EBPF doing the service mesh is a project for that. Yeah, I, th I think if I if I meant if I got the question right, um, so so Cilium is one of the more prominent you know service meshes that takes that um, EBPF based approach, and in their it was a relatively recent release from them. I think it's the one point two version of Cilium that uh, announces sort of not just Cilium, the project, but Cilium service mesh as a capability. And then, yeah, to, to Dim's point, one of the other larger announcements more recently has been um, Istio Ambient Mesh, which is a, you know, an alternative deployment model for um, Istio itself. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, Cilium. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Tag Network, if there's no other questions. Tag Contributor Strategy, come on in. I believe you are our last one today. Hi. <laughs> oh, well, hello, everyone. I'm Catherine, uh, the new Tag Contributor Strategy co-chair. Uh, so just wanted to say first, I really appreciate the trust that Don and Josh and everyone else have placed in me. So I'm really excited to be here and thank you. Um, Okay, so last time Don mentioned that we were working on a survey with the CNCF, uh, and basically the goal is to understand uh, contributor friction points. Um, the survey is open. Uh, we have 73 respondents so far. That is not a lot, uh, and we need your help. I probably don't need to explain why this is important. I think everyone uh, on this call gets it. So please, please, Please um, help us get the word out, uh, mention it during meetings. If you have any talks, share on social media. Maybe there's a company newsletter you where it would make sense to kind of add like a little call to action or any other ideas that you may have. Uh, the CNCF um, wants to um, announce the results during KubeCon. So there is not a lot of time. So we really need to mobilize uh, people here, ideally, quickly. Um, we will have a KubeCon kiosk in the Project Pavilion, so really excited about that. Our goal is to raise awareness, um, so we'll be sh uh, showcasing the different resources uh, we have, tell uh, projects, uh, project owners how we can help, and we also created this uh, fun uh, tag heroine, uh, which was donated by the very talented illustrator Zuan Ho, uh, and you can help too. Uh, so if you're at KubeCon, swing by the kiosk, get your stick it on your laptop, help us raise awareness so people know about the tag. Um, moving on to mentoring. Um, so we expect to complete 110 mentee projects across the CNCF, that, that is Linux Foundation and Google Summer of Code. 
the goal was 100, so that's amazing, right? So overachieving here. <laughs> uh, we have seven, uh, 27 mentees who have completed the Linux Foundation uh, project so far. Um, but we do want to do more outreach. Uh, so if anyone is interested uh, in helping coordinate that, please, please reach out via Slack or join the mentoring meeting um, and we can coordinate. Uh, also, very excited about that we are starting our New Zealand Indigenous Recruitment Program. That is a experiment where we're trying to reach people outside of traditional contributor targets. Uh, in this case, targeting the Maori talent. Uh, so uh, it is an awesome initiative. And hopefully this will become a blueprint for the future to reach out to um, other communities as well. Uh, on the governance say, uh, side, it's been mainly, uh, the TAG has been mainly involved in direct project um, assistance, um, uh, helping uh, the uh, operator framework draft a new governance, as well as helping Knative and Istio run elections. Um, so that's basically it. But a reminder as always, um, when as you're reaching out to uh, projects regarding the diligence or annual reports, please encourage them to get in touch. There's lots of ways the TAC can help projects. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Are there any questions? Uh, thank you. Congratulations. And I wasn't sure if you would make it here, but you did. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so uh, we left some notes on the chat on like how we can uh, spread the word uh, on the contributor survey. So uh, let's do a few things there and see if we can bump it up. Um, so let's do these things this week and then see the response next week. If you are still uh, not getting enough responses, then we can uh, like, you know, just hit us up on uh, hash TOC and we can figure out like where else we can be doing stuff. I'm also going to reset the expectations like 73 is actually really good for most of our surveys. So like, <laughs> I understand like the request and also like that's still really good. Understood. Yes. Um, so we, yeah, maintenance mailing list and things like that too. So uh, let's do more. Uh, you know, I'm sure we can do better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anything else for tech contributor strategy? Okay. Hearing nothing. Um, quick update on projects applying to move levels. Any updates from the folks on the call? Okay, hearing hearing nothing like people rising up to be able to talk about projects moving levels. We have actually a few minutes for questions. Um, and I know that there were some, some questions running around out in the wild, so. I have a question for Catherine on the tech contributor strategy. So how is the um, contributor board? Yeah, that's the name. I'm not sure whether that name may change the going. That um, connects the, yeah. Yeah, I don't think we have a, a name right now still. Um, so I think, uh, I don't know what the latest is. I know that, um, oh yeah, now I forgot. Uh, Alexander was uh, kind of yeah. taking that. Yeah, uh, Josh, are you? I think I Yeah, I'm, I'm on. Um, the, um, so um, the, um, uh, Alexander's still planning for that. Part of the idea is that we actually want to make use of the data in the survey um, to look at what's going to be effective and helpful for the projects. Um, I, as I said in the contributor strategy thing, we actually tried doing something like this in Kubernetes and it was not successful. Um, so we really want to take a different and well-considered approach rather than just throwing something out there. Um, uh, because otherwise it'll end up with a repeat of the Kubernetes experience where we have a board up, but there are no opportunities listed. Um, and, and as a result, it isn't really useful to anybody. So um, the um, so we're not rushing into this. Neither Josh has had internet connection issues or, or I am having issues. That's Josh, I think. Okay, all right. Nope, that's completely fine. Um, yeah, what it, what I think I heard out of all of that was um, working on being able to get better data from the survey uh, 
to be able to kind of help track and scope that more correctly. So. Yeah, but definitely something that we're working on, Kathy. Um, and we do believe it's it's important and useful. Um, but yeah, as just said, we want to learn from what happened in the past, what didn't work, and try yeah, to, to learn from that. But yeah, we do have people who are interested in working on it. So I think it's going to happen. OK, great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I, I did want to bring up something here. Um, so Nikita sent uh, had pinged yesterday, today, I forget when. Um, Emily, you remember that con context, right? So, um, it, so right now we don't have all the information in one YAML file, for example, all the, oh, you, there you are, Nikita. Why don't you speak to it, please? Sure. Um, so this actually originated from the PR that was added uh, about requiring working groups to be part of TATS. Uh, so to set some context, there were two things that came up with this issue. So one was slightly tactical, one was a little strategic. So the tactical part was that uh, we want to have a single source of truth uh, for tags and working groups that also should be machine readable. Uh, we were discussing about this in Slack and the TOC channel just now. We also want to have some more information added to it about like who are the chairs and leads for these tags, when were these leads added and so on. Uh, and we do something similar in Kubernetes already for six and working groups, and I helped maintain that. So I decided to pick it up. So I'm going to create a PR for it. Um, there's one more strategic aspect uh, around this. So the other question, open question that came up was whether TOC needs to approve working group uh, creations or tags have the autonomy to just go and create it themselves. I think that was still open, but the consensus was that first we're going to get a picture of what working groups exists, which ones are active and so on. Uh, Dims, you had a PR open for it, I think. So I wanted to talk about that as well. So uh, I noticed there was some discussion and back and forth on it. So has there been any progress and do we know the list of working groups? Uh, I do have a, a to-do item to go talk to the serverless working group because I think that is the one that is left from the list that we had there. Uh, so don't use that as a blocker for this, you know, we can uh, we can give them leniency or we can special case it uh, for now, okay? Um, so let's just assume that uh, all the working groups belong to a tag and uh, maybe you can propose uh, a structure for the YAML file and then we can like debate about it on, on the PR itself. Yeah, there's one other thing that could be helpful, but I'm not sure if we have like capacity to be able to do this when these things actually happen. Um, but again, that, that might be a little bit of a stretch. It'd be super helpful, though. Yeah. Can't hear you. Uh, I, I think that should be possible, so I'll try to make it in the PR. I will, okay. I will, I will work with you to be able to make sure that data is either like, you know, as good as we can do. How's that? Okay. Sounds good. Anything else? All right, um, Dims, I will leave it to you to close the meeting. There. Uh, so anything we need to do for KubeCon or before KubeCon or uh, during KubeCon? I, I know uh, the TOC, we have some stuff that we need to do there. Uh, other than that. Uh, Dims, uh, I just have a quick question. Uh, is there typically a retrospective after a KubeCon that comes in from the tags? Uh, you know, because I would, if there isn't, I'd like to suggest one. And and the reason is that, you know, often we'll get a fair bit of feedback at KubeCon uh, on various projects, you know, in each, each of the areas. And that would be good to communicate back to the, to the yeah, TOC. Absolutely. Uh, let's find time, uh, Amy. To so actually, our next tag update meeting is going to be um, uh, November 1st, and that is directly after KubeCon. Um, I think, so given as you all are going to be at KubeCon, I'm perfectly happy to be able to have that meeting via how did KubeCon go, um, details, thoughts, and, and that sort of thing. Dance is Will we be recovering from KubeCon at that time? <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's like kind of like that we can we can we can cancel that meeting and let everybody take a nap. Um, we've also got another opportunity on the fifteenth of November. I think the fifteenth would be ideal. All right. 
happy to be able to track towards that. Um, so this is likely, uh, but we do have another meeting for the TOC coming up on the 18th. But again, that's the before KubeCon, so. All right. Awesome, November 15th it is, thank you. That again. is completely fine. I'm happy to put it into the agendas, all right. Yeah, thanks everyone. Thank you, looking forward right. to seeing everyone. We are at time, good to see you all. Bye. Yeah. Thank Bye you. All. Bye. Bye. Thank you everyone. Uh,